This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, the turret reader, the horror fan, Anna Marguerite Brande Marte. Uh, she's got her own show now. It's called Message from the Afterlife. I got to be on there back in February. It was a lot of fun. And Anna's coming back on for the first time in four years. And this will be her fifth time coming on. I thought at the time that we had said and done everything, you know, that we could possibly say. But apparently we have more to say now. Now that, you know, I was on her show and she interviewed me. And you can go check out that uh, episode. It's on YouTube. Message from the Afterlife. Tommy Kovac is on there. And it'll be another great conversation today. Maybe get into the horror conventions and some horror talk and what have you. And I gotta tell you, April has been so good so far. I got some real toe curlers next week. Some people um, who are just legendary. Their work is like religion to me in the world of film and music, and it's going to be a great week next week, just fantastic, you know, I was considered a loser back home, and now I'm consi- I'm still considered a loser back home, but I don't give a fuck, because I love what I do, also, happy birthday, Leslie Donaldson, Canadian Scream Queen, and one-time guest of the show, I love you, Leslie, you're awesome. So yeah, here is my new interview with Anna Marguerite Brande Marte. So, I was happy when I got to be on your show, Message from the Afterlife, back in February. How long have you been doing it now? Um, I've been doing it since September. Wow, since last September. I think, uh, yeah, since September. Yeah, no, uh, this September. Yeah, what's the origin of it? Um, this past September, I think. Yes. Um, well, you, you mean what, what it's about, pretty much? Yeah, like what gave you the idea to do it? Oh, well, I, I wanted to create... I wanted to create the show because um, I was inspired from somebody, and then some of, one of my own friends helped me um, put it together. And then I wanted to create a place where um, people can just come on there, feel like they can be loved and respected, it, and this way they have a place to go where you don't have to be on TV, you don't have to write a book, you can just be a normal person. Person walking the street one day happen to be crossed in paranormal. Right. You know, a lot of people have these, you know, things sometimes. And a lot of times people really want to tell their story. So I want to make sure I give a home like that to everybody to where, hey, listen, I have this great evidence and great story. Can I share it? Sure, come right on. You don't have to be on a team to do that. So that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to show. Um, the paranormal world to feel like they, they feel important. You know, they feel like they're doing, they have the evidence and the hard work and they're not pretending to do it. And same goes for mediums. You know, I do it for mediums as well between want to show their gift. They can do live reading. Uh, they can also feel love and respect the same thing with monster stories. Uh, I have people on there that have done uh, two alien stories already. Mm-hmm. So I want people to come up to me and not feel nervous to ask to be on it type thing. So, um, and ever since then, I've just been getting a lot of love and respect from a lot of people. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Now, I remember you and I talked a little bit about, you know, my my ghost experience and, and so forth. But do you like, uh, you, you do you give people turret readings on air? Are you talking about people or? Yeah, people. 
or me doing live readings. I didn't catch the you, last little part. You, um, oh, um, yes, I actually have somebody doing live readings, and she got almost a hundred ASOP viewers, and wow. they loved, and they loved it. So they really, really enjoyed it, and it seemed like whenever I change up something like that, it really starts taking off. I, I had a tarot reading. So she did really, really well. Yeah, I had a tarot reading back in December of 2019. Uh, my friend Amanda, who I just love, she's just so quirky, and we've been friends a long time. She uh, gave me a tarot reading back in December of 2019, and she was just so right on. She was like, you need to focus on you and your health and not worry about your mother so much because you're, you're going to die if you don't. And... You know what, once I got the diabetes diagnosis last April, you know, I realized she was truly right. Yeah, well, when I gave you, yeah, when I, remember I gave you my reading, I told you you were yep. going to take off and you, you do it right well for what I see. Yep, I know I'm so I'm so lucky. I really am. Next week, oh, I have got some toe curlers next week. People whose work is like religion to me. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch it. If you want, you're more welcome to post it on my page. And this way you can get more followers for your, for yours too. So don't be shy to go ahead and share that. Oh, thank you're you. More welcome to it. Yeah. Thank you. That'd be awesome. So how many interviews have you done? Have I done? Mm -hmm. um, so many where I had to write, uh, buy a notepad. Yeah for it because I couldn't keep up with all of it. <laughs> um, I've done a lot to where I'm actually being a guest on other shows in between me interviewing people. Um, I've gotten so many paranormal people come up to me out of the blue asking me, I would love to come on. I hear so much about you. and um, mm -hmm. I, I did quite a handful for myself. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been great. So who's on your bucket list? Oh my god. Um I wanna get people I wanna get a little bit more actors on mine. Um yeah. but they're so hard to ask. I don't know how to ask them. I would love to get uh, the people from the country on there. Um, anything that has to do with paranormal movies, I would <laughs> like to get maybe, you know, this is one of the freaking million uh, Zach on my show, but that one will happen. Um, that, that's a dream of mine. I would like to get um, what's her, uh, Teresa Caputo on my show because she's like an idol for for me, ever mm -hmm. since she started, I have all her books. I've seen every one of her seasons. I love her. I've seen her show live. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to have her. So there's there's quite a few people um, on my bucket list. If I had a horror movie one, man, that's that that's a rough one. You should know that. Yeah. <laughs> I have quite a few on my bucket list with that one. Um, maybe maybe the people from one. The craft movie, which I have met mm -hmm. at MonsterCon, but hey, listen, never say never, right? Right. Oh. But like I said, though, you know, DM the people. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how that how that goes. Yeah, like I said, DM right. the, DM the people on social media. Uh, if you have mutual friends with them, that's a, that's a plus. And just you know, let them know your intentions. Let them know that you're in the business as well. I found that that works very well. Okay. Yeah, because they they get comfortable with you. Yeah. When you, when, I mean, when I've tried out. that with a few people for some reason. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of people consider me a journalist, right? But I, I, when I let people know that I'm not a journalist, that just makes them so much more comfortable because they don't want to talk about gossip and bullshit that's already written out there, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, 
So, yeah, you were a lot of fun with me um, when I was on your show. You made it really comfortable and easy. And seeing that um, seeing that shameless smirk on your face uh, oh, was, just, you. was just so adorable. Yeah, I mean, I had a blast. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> well, that's what I try to do for everybody. Mm-hmm. I try to make them feel good about themselves. I make them feel comfortable. I don't want to ask them questions to where, like, what did you just say? And I've been on shows like that. It's like, why would you do that to people? Just keep it nice and simple and make them feel comfortable for them. It's not easy for a lot of people to be on shows and talk about things, and a lot of times they're not comfortable talking about yeah. certain things either. So you got to make them feel like they're a friend. you got to make them feel like they're family, and that's the way I want people to feel when they're on on my show and this way they look forward to coming back again and it's just this the way the way i am so i i care for people i don't make them feel uncomfortable i don't talk anything about them and it's just not who i am so i know i try to do the exact same thing and i'll tell you <laughs> I had this, this, there's this listener of mine who commented on, on one interview, <laughs> he, he, he commented on one video that I posted uh, last, last year where he was like, hey Tommy, have you ever, mm -hmm. da have you ever dated any of your guests? And I was like, I wish, <laughs> you know, no, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah. So have you um, done, um, or have you gone to any conventions lately? Um, no, I, uh, you know what? No, I have. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, it's not paranormal. Uh-huh. Hello. Um, I've been to a film, film festival. I was personally asked. Mm-hmm. Um, by the guy who was running it. Um, now we're very good friends. Uh, he's a very sweet man I have ever met. Mm. But he is actually is an actor who directs movies. Um, he invited me to, he needed a host, and one day he called me up and said, you know, I've seen how well you do with your interviews. I'm actually looking for a host for my film festival. Would you be interested in working it? And I said, absolutely. Was I scared? Yes, I was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, I was live in front of a big camera. I mean, this wasn't not just a broadcast where I sit in front of a computer. I was in a, being asked for it in front of a big camera. And people were staring at me, which I'm like, oh, shit. And <laughs> I'm in my gown. I have it on my page. I'll have to tag it to you. Okay. I'm in my gown because we had to do do a lot of dressing up and stuff like that because it was that kind of event. Yeah. And I, I kind of went with the flow and they said for, for the first time you did actually very well. And I was like, really? I kind of think when I do things, I kind of just go for it because if I think as they do it, then I mess up. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was an honor of meeting the actors and actresses. And because of my show, um, I actually got a new opportunity in May, tw May 20th, the guy that I met at the film festival, he's an actor, and he said, would you be interested in f interviewing for my friend of mine and for doing her movie? And I said, sure, I would love to. It was I was asked out of the blue, so mm -hmm. now, now because of the film festival and I met all these great people, a lot of new doors has been opening up for me and it's been an Amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, you know, I was going to push it in 2020 to um, get to be hosting panels at conventions, but the pandemic shelved that. But in 2021, I uh, got offered by a, uh, a Comic-Con promoter that I had on the show once to uh, host a panel for a guest who um, is no longer with us. He died recently. And I thank God that my mom had surgery that week that I had to cancel because it was a guy who has a reputation for, for hitting women. And so, like, it would have been uncomfortable for me to be a part of that panel. So I'm glad I didn't get to do it. 
but um, I'll get to do right. it. I'll get to do it eventually. You know, um, I mean, he hasn't shown much enthusiastic about uh, giving me another chance yeah. because um, I tried to get him a replacement at last minute, and I think he got really pissy about it. So we'll we'll see. Jeez. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of sad I can't go to Monster Palooza this year. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm sad I can't go to Monster Palooza this year because it's my birthday at that time. Oh no! And money is very tight, and oh my god, right. uh, everybody from Nightmare on Elm Street will be there again. This is the oh, second, tell me about it. second time in six years that <gasps> they will be there. And Jill Sholin will be there. She's a, a good friend of mine. She's been wow. There Where is times. it? In, in Pasadena. California. Oh, okay. That's a trip. Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that, that's a one that's, place on my bucket list I want to go anyway, so that's, it's California. That's, that's, my, that's the first weekend in June, and it's my birthday weekend, so unfortunately I can't go this year. But, uh, oh my God, do you remember... Fangoria Weekend of Horrors. That would have been a nice birthday. Not off. Okay. For, yeah, no. Okay, it was Fangoria Magazine's horror convention for years and years. Okay? And in 1985, they, okay. did, they did the very first one, and they did a documentary that was like one of the biggest selling VHS tapes of all time. I mean, it was huge. You couldn't go to a store without seeing it on the shelf. And so it's on YouTube now, and I'm reading the comments, and they are just so negative about how, you know, everyone's charging a ton of money for the conventions now and what have you. And I wrote a comment that got deleted along with all the others, and I was kind of pissed. I was just telling the truth, you know. These conventions... And all this money that they're making right. um, off fans. This is payback for not getting residuals on these low-budget horror movies back in the 80s, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't say anything more. Yeah, I mean, it is just crazy, you know? I mean, there's two types of celebs. Nobody has the freedom of speech. Yeah. There's two types of celebs who do con signings. The ones who are happy to do it because they truly care about the fans. And then there's the ones who only care about their bullshit reputation and their wholesome image. And they just want to profit off people because they're bitter actors who rather play Hamlet than Dracula. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to run into that stuff. And just the fact that I was telling... You know, that reality, it's just, it's weird that they deleted it, you know. But I'll watch that documentary and think to myself, God, I wish I, I, wish I could have been there. Because my parents didn't like horror. They didn't take me to Fangoria when I was a kid. Do, do you remember your first horror convention? Uh, yeah, it was Monster Con. What year was that? Uh, I went to my very first month. Uh, the very first year that John Cusack. Oh, that was just like maybe was there. maybe like that's where when I met John Cusack is my very first. That's got to be five or six years ago, right? Um, that's the maybe. Um, that's the first one that you know who I was friends with at the time yeah, that yeah. I went with. Yeah. I don't want to say names. Yeah, we had we had a falling out. You know out. what I'm referring to, right? <laughs> yeah, we had a falling out recently, and it was crazy. Did you? Yeah, stuff I had. To, yeah, well, I had to block, and then you know she blocked me too. Whatever. I didn't fall out very well either. Yeah. Yeah, she gets angry way too fast with um. With reactions, and I was like, "What the hell did I do?" And then she started coming at me, mm -hmm. and you know, that was a mess and a half. But it is what it is. There's a guy I won't say his name. Um, he DM'd me. 
Um, back in 21, I interviewed this guy who's a historian about the monkeys. And this guy, he's in the horror scene. And okay. And he, he has a lot of cachet with the, with the monkeys uh, people, which is kind of bizarre. And so he wanted me to come on the pod. He wanted to come on the podcast, right? And he was using the fact that he was a monkeys expert as well as a horror expert as leverage to get on, right? I looked at his picture. He looked like a, a weirdo and a freak, right? And I get this all the time. So, like, I, I politely declined. Yeah. And and I told him to DM my friend Greg Gilbert, uh, who has a podcast up in uh, Canada, Python's Paradise, which, by the way, you should go on his show. He's great. And um, he, um, he, uh, he, yeah. so next thing I know, a couple weeks later, Greg um, makes the announcement that this guy is going to be on his show. And I said to him, you know why he's doing your show, right? And I said, and he said, no, why? And I said, because... I declined him because he was. I thought. I thought that he was crazy, right? And he says to me, "Well, he he didn't DM me. His publicist did." And I was like, "Huh, that's strange, right?" Next thing I know, he's telling Greg that I was a fucking asshole to him and shit. And then I'm I'm watching their interview and I'm like, "This guy obviously has a little bit of autistic spectrum, you know. So he's he takes everything personally, you know. If if, if things don't go his way, so I was just like, whatever, man, whatever." Yeah, it's not my problem. Uh, he might annoy me. Yeah, it's not my problem. But I'll tell you, my favorite horror guests. You already did the list, you yeah, my favorite horror guests are the ones from movies that are so obscure and esoteric, only people like us would know them because they're not sucked into the convention scene. You know, they have a lot more, a lot more uh, humility, and they're a lot more fun, and they got better stories. You know, like there's this there's this one obscure horror movie called The Black Room. Did you ever see it? Black room. Uh, I probably might have, but I don't remember here. Nineteen eighty. The title. Nineteen eighty-two. It's it, it was very ahead of its time. It's basically about a, a um, an an Airbnb. Okay. An Airbnb owning brother and sister who are like swingers, and they're like luring like married men into the Airbnb, and like. Um, First they have sex with them, and then they, like, you know, stick needles in them and suck their blood out like they're vampires, you know? And I've talked to the husband, the the main character. I had him on a month ago. It's sadly, that man's uh, mental health is declining. He has, um, what is it, Alzheimer's? It's really sad. And... The woman who plays his wife, I had her on first last year for the 40th mm. anniversary of the movie, and she was just all over the place, you know, very nervous, but she was fun. I liked talking to her, you know, I like guests like that. Yeah. Uh, you ever seen Lone Wolf? No, what is it? Lone Wolf, 1988? No. No, I don't know. Mm, no, I don't think I have. It's a yeah, it's a werewolf movie from uh, from 1988. It was shot up in Colorado. Not off the top of my head, I, I don't think I have. Yeah, and I talked to the director of that movie, and he was really intense and just wild. You know, I like interviews like that. You know, those those are just the most fun. You know, because they're they're shocked at how these movies have yeah. had longevity. Yep. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, what I, I would like to get exciting people like that if I can. Um, when the time is right, I'll have to do some research and add some cool people on my show. Oh. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna give you a list of people that are like at our level that are in the horror scene that are like making films and so forth. Right. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the, all the names okay. of all the. All the good people, because I, I think you would. It would be great for you to. I appreciate with them. that. Thank you. Yes. All the people. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, you ever seen? Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. 
Of course. You ever see Madman? No. Yeah, wow, well, I'm really way off my rocker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a low budget slasher movie. It was a rip off of Friday the thirteenth. No, I've never I don't think I've seen that. Yeah. It was a rip off of Friday the thirteenth, nineteen eighty one. Uh Galen Ross from Dawn of the Dead is the star. And she's doing a reunion for this movie at Chiller Con. You know that con I told you about last time you were on four years ago? Yeah. And she is finally owning it because she would not she would not talk about this movie for 40 years because um, she had to change her name because it was a non-union movie. And she's doing a reunion for it at Chiller Con. And uh, she might be coming on soon, so fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope that happens for you. I really, really do. Yes. I hope. Yeah. So, who else would you like to get from like? I hope she comes on and you get her and. Mm -hmm. awesome. Who Who else would you like to get from um, from horror movies? Yeah, all my books full. Um. Mm -hmm. Jeez. I think. Um pretty much all of them. <laughs> but you know that's impossible. <laughs> Cause I have to have like a whole list of people I I, I like and um jeez. Uh, I would like since I met John, I like to have him mm -hmm. Bond, because I love 1408. I can watch it anytime, anywhere. I love that movie. I like him in The Raven. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to think who else. Jeez, I don't know. I so many people I love in horror. Uh, of course, the um, Jason, the guy who plays Freddy, which I am so mad I haven't even met him yet for all the goddamn horror cons that I've been to. And I still haven't got a chance to meet that damn guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's, yeah. like, impossible. Yeah. Um, there, was a, there was a Roger Corman movie. I love an autograph from him. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a Roger Corman movie from 1958 uh, called... What's it called? The Gods of Shark Reef. And the woman who was in it... Uh, Lisa Montel, she died um, a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't know it until yesterday because I DM'd her um, uh, to come on the show because the movie turned sixty five this year, and I was like, "Damn it, she was the last one," you know. Yeah, I was too late. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know whose birthday it is today? That sucks. What? <laughs> it's Leslie Donaldson's birthday. Leslie who? Leslie oh, Do shit. Leslie Donaldson, happy happy birthday to me, and Curtains, which I love. I love that movie. Happy birthday, if she's listening. Yeah, I had her on back in 2017. She's a force of nature. I love her. And, um, yeah, oh, my God. she's Wow, that's cool. Yeah, she's always talking about her ice skating scene in Curtains, you know, when she gets uh, killed by the killer and that. I don't know if I've even heard of it. You need to see Curtain? it. It was way ahead of its time. It it, it was like the pre-hashtag... I'll have to look it up. It was like the pre-hashtag Me Too movie, because it's about all these actresses uh, spending the weekend in a uh, cabin with this director... <laughs> Who, who may fuck these girls, may not, you know, and there's a killer on the loose. Yeah. And Lynn Griffin is in it, you know, and she's a, 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 a frequent guest of the show. That's awesome. That yeah. Of course, she was the first victim in Black Christmas, you know, she got suffocated by the um, laundry bag. Yeah. Yeah. So last time we That's talked... Awesome. Yeah. So last time we talked, it was pre -pand it was pre pandemic, just like four or five months before the pandemic uh, was launched. Like, how's it been for you overall? Um, pretty good. It's been 
been great. I can't complain. Well, I can, but, you know, <laughs> it'd be too long of a paragraph. Way too long of a paragraph. <laughs> um, it's been great. Busy. Uh, new opportunities are coming my way that has nothing to do with the paranormal. Mm -hmm. um, taking a total of a different path that I never thought I would be on. It's like a total dream that you see in movies, but yeah. I'm not going to say anything because I have a... Uh, um, a project in two weeks um, called in Maryland and you'll see it after I post pictures you'll be like what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you and I can't believe it but you know dreams happen when you're not expecting it right? Right. I, I fell down so a, I can't I, wait for that. I fell down a rabbit hole of depression during the pandemic and part of it was because my dreams were put on the back burner. Oh everybody did. And also, you know, um, so many people who had never been available to me to interview were suddenly available. It was just a weird phenomenon. But it, it made me better as an interviewer, I have to say. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's just been, it's been a real blessing, you know. I just hope... The world will fucking get its head out of its ass, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, when you work hard and, and you really, mm -hmm. really want something and you don't give up, then you can just keep picking yourself up and, hey, you never know where it's going to lead you. Yeah. I mean... Just kind of keep on going. It was like a tidal wave of guests that were thrown at me in 2020. It was a crazy, crazy year. Yeah. And it hasn't stopped, you know. Although I will say, in January of Well, last, that's a good thing, though. Yeah. In January of last year, it kind of slowed down a little bit, and I was worried. And then it picked up again. It was, it was kind of crazy. So are you, are you fully vaccinated? Yeah, well, I'm glad you're doing very well. You deserve it. Thank you. Unfortunately, uh, yes. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm triple vaccinated. Um, mm. I didn't want to. Uh, I had no choice in the matter because I had to work in the, I had to work in a nursing home. Right. Home, and they made me get all three shots. Unfortunately, and it's like, man, they make me sick. Yeah. I had 24 hours. If it wasn't for that, I would have said no. So because. Hmm. The va I don't believe in that vaccination crap. It's only to prove that, oh, it helps this, it helps that. Give me a break. I hear a lot of people having are getting sick from it and having weird reactions later on from having it. And I'm like, I'll never get that shit ever again. I don't know. I don't care. Uh -huh. I, I hope to God. That, that, I hope to God it doesn't have me drop dead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm hoping to God it doesn't have me drop dead because there was a documentary that came out. I think it was called Gone Suddenly or something like that. Yeah, it, I'm nervous about that too. Yeah, I was fucking really? terrified. I was fucking terrified when I found out about that documentary. I, I hope, I hope to God that, that that doesn't happen. You know, especially now with my diabetes, I'm just I'm terrified. Yeah. In May of 2020. Yeah, I, you know, I hear, you know, kids are getting sick. Yeah, in May of 2020, I woke up uh, one Monday, yeah. one Monday morning. I did an interview, and then I had another one scheduled for 6 p.m. and I canceled it. I was so ill, and like I never cancel interviews. People cancel on me all the time, but I was ill, and I went to the doctor. Turns out it was just like a. 40, oh, that's a shame. It was a 48-hour yeah, virus. Horrible, man. Yeah. It was like a 48-hour virus. That sucked. And like, when I got the booster was no better either. Cause yeah. And they made me get the third shot. And I was like, oh, my God. I feel like I got ran over. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was horrible. Well, because nursing homes and when I did the. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Talk about the nursing homes. 
Oh, oh when I did home care, um, mm -hmm. the last one I did, they made me get the last booster shot, and I was like, oh. Oh, I was sick. I was like, no, they got mad at me because I had to call out of work. And I was like, well, you're the one who made me get it. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. To me, I think it should be a choice, not a force. Mm -hmm. I understand that you work in hospitals is one thing. You work in nursing homes, that's another, because you're surrounded by people and they're coughing and all this other stuff. But you can't not... I don't like when jobs force things on you that is against your free will mm -hmm. and if somebody doesn't and if you have health problems and don't feel comfortable getting it you can't force them and then you, and they're like well if you don't get it you're fired isn't enough right. fire then i don't want to work with you anyways i don't like that forcing crap right so do you have any easter plans Just uh, join it with family, and um, I I wouldn't tra travel. But for me to go to traveling back to Jersey is like six states from here, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's about like an eight hour trip with the traffic. And um, sooner or later, I'll go back to Jersey um, to visit, but not anytime mm -hmm. soon. Just stay home and relax, and um, eat great food, and watch things on. TV, feel full afterwards, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> no cleaning. <laughs> Just eat and be lazy. And wiggle your toes. What about you? What you got going on? And that is about it. Um, that's just probably prime rib night at my godparents' house, which I hate going to my, my, my godparents because they're very conservative right. and rich and stuck up and all that stuff. But whatever. I mean, it's something. Right, yeah. So are you recording tonight? Uh, yes, I have a show at 8 o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. Who's the so guy? We're talking about Urban Legends. Oh, so nice. That, um, yeah, we're trying to do something new. And um, instead of like having guests to kind of take a break and maybe... Mm -hmm. Trying to fire up so, to where it brings more interaction and more attention, and be like, okay, well, will she ever mm -hmm. does this has guests on there? You know, you never know. People may like the story of urban legends. There's so many of it. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe half of them that I have never heard of before, and um, I think it would be quite interesting um, to talk about. Just besides having, I don't mind having guests on, but maybe just to break it up a little bit and see what happens. Um, yeah. From after today, um, there's going to be three of us on there, and um, yeah, uh, it should be quite interesting. So hopefully, when I say Bloody Mary, I'm going to make sure I don't say it three times right from near a mirror. <laughs> oh, I love that movie, Mirror Mirror. Oh, can I do it? Can I do it? He's like, no. <laughs> I came. Uh, I came very close to reaching there out. There are so to, many eerie stories about Bloody Mary, yeah. and I had a friend. Go ahead. I had a friend back in high school uh, that told me that she did it at her house, and it actually came true with all the paranormal hauntings. It was so bad where she actually had to move it uh -huh. out. So. I, do I believe it? Uh, maybe, maybe yeah. not. Um, <laughs> I tried it a couple times. It didn't really. It almost all follows me anyway, so it's kind of hard for me to believe it when it was from the mirror or me. So we'll we'll see what happens when we get the reactions reactions from later. Right. Yeah. I, so I, that I, should be quite interesting tonight. I came very close to reaching out to the uh, the two sisters who wrote Mirror Mirror uh, last Halloween, and I just became overcrowded. Maybe I'll do it this year. Maybe for sure I'll do it this year. Yeah, go go for it. That movie was a definitely huge, go for it. That movie was a huge staple of my Halloweens. I'll tell you when I was a kid. What? 
movie was it? Mirror, Mirror. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what I realized of of you know, of all the other podcasts you and I have done? Right, we have never played my secret silly game. Okay. Okay. This is a series of silly slumber party questions. No win or lose. It's just pure fun. And how the game works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question and I answer it. And okay. Feel free to comment on answers because they might be funny. Okay? Okay. Anna, are you ticklish? Yes. Okay, you asked me the same question. Where are I telling you? <laughs> <laughs> next oh wait you're supposed to ask me that question next oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> wrong <laughs> are you ticklish yes if you tickle me without warning I might hit you in the groin yes so maybe so oh boy what's your favorite part of the body Oh, you're one of those, huh? All right, go ahead, shoot. Yep. Uh, that's top secret. <laughs> okay, I, I can I imagine. I have not spilled the beans on that one. Sorry. I can imagine. You you can DM me later. <laughs> what is your favorite part? Of the... uh, yes, now now. Mhm. Mm Via DM message. What's your favorite part of the body? The be the belly oh, button. The belly? Okay. Yes. Really? Yeah. The belly button of all things? Wow. Yes. You, ha you have a cute one, by oh. the way. That, that's something I haven't heard yet. Oh, T, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm cute. <laughs> what color are your toenails painted? Wow, that's bizarre. How'd you know that? Cream <laughs> feet as hell. Uh, <laughs> um, they are um, gold. Nice. Because of the event I just did. So I was trying to match with maybe I was wearing. So usually I don't paint my toenails because I mm -hmm. don't really care for that too yeah. much. But because I was at this event, I, it had to get done. It's the case. Say, hey, listen, they look at you. Your shoes, but not your feet. But if they did, be like, "Holy shit! Don't you ever get your feet done?" So I made sure I got my feet done this time. Um, but yeah, it, it's they're kind of like sparkling gold. I really hope your toenails are not painted. <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> I've, I've been painting my toenails since I was thirteen. So are your feet? Holy crap! Really? Yep. Really, my bad. I didn't mean to laugh like that. I'm sorry. Oh, a my apologies. It's okay. People do that all the time. Uh, right now, they're not painted. Wow. Hey, you know what? It's what uh, you're into. So whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Okay. Right now, they're not painted, but I like to go elaborate. So. Well, whatever floats your boat. What would you say? Okay. Is your, what would you say is your best personality trait? Uh, just being funny. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> best way I can answer that. <laughs> uh yeah just try to be funny mm -hmm. and laugh with things and make people laugh and yeah pretty much just try to have a, a really good personality and i guess <laughs> so right back at you <laughs> thank you good what's your best personality okay i have empathy and i have no filter Okay. Huh? I'm a, I'm a Gemini. Yep, Scorpion. Mm -hmm. Scorpio. <laughs> yeah. Scorpion, Scorpion. And then my favorite... Scorpio, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All then, right, shoot. And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? What? what? Oh, like you wouldn't believe it. You sure you want me to share that one? Yeah. <laughs> People do all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, what makes me want to gag? Uh, 
Well, one, vomit, of course. Yeah. Uh, dead body smell, of course. Uh, uh, garbage. It depends on the garbage. Um, uh, when people have a bad stomach ache in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, well, that's quite a few. Uh, to, if, I haven't gagged over them, but if I, uh-huh. I saw, like, body guts in front of me and stuff like that, maybe. Maybe. But the one thing that does get... To me, if somebody throws up in front of me, I'll forget. I'm done. I am done. I've had that happen to me when I was a kid at school, mm-hmm. and ever since then, I cannot stand when people do that, and it really goes through me. And it's like, Ugh. I can't even watch it in horror movies. Nope, I gotta turn it off. Absolutely <laughs> not. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's your turn. Uh, it's either farts or, or feet. Was it, what is your smell that makes you gag? It's either farts really? or feet. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm used to that. Especially I know. Especially family that does it constantly. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them tell me that. <laughs> wow, that's an interesting one. I wouldn't even thought with feet. Wow. Especially with feet. Feet. Yeah. It has to really smell to make you want to gag. It, it does. Wow. It does. That is crazy. That's crazy. I that, mean, uh, I can see the... I can see gas being really rotten. Right. Until a point where it smells bad. That I can see. My feet. Yeah. That's a weird one for me. <laughs> Anna, thank you so, so much for coming back on. That was cool. Yes. I just, I, I just love you. You're just so awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Tommy. You are a, such a gem. Oh, I love you too, buddy. You're more welcome to come. Yes back our show anytime you're more welcome just hit me up and say hey listen i feel like coming on come right on anytime you want yes we'll make that happen we and... even make it rated r for you <laughs> <laughs> you have yourself a happy easter stay safe this out time there. I, i'll make sure you see me up for a few months yeah <laughs> awesome yes happy easter to you and your family and god bless and enjoy your time and um I wish you all the best, and I'm glad you're doing well for yourself. Just Thanks. keep going, buddy. That's all you got to do. Absolutely. Oh, you're welcome. Don't let people... God bless. Don't let people put you down. I won't. You too, hon. Bye-bye. <laughs> all right, bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Anna Marguerite Brande Marte. Ain't she a sweetheart? I just adore her. Go check out her show, Message from the Afterlife. And I apologize for those technical difficulties. Damn it, every time we have weather like this, it starts getting all freaking dodgy. But hey, what can you do sometimes? Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes!